What's ahead in the work week forecast? Let's go to First Alert meteorologist Darren Peck. Going to start out with a perfect example using our virtual map because tomorrow is going to be very typical for this time of year. There's a reason why they've come up with that fun descriptor of August, right? We went through June gloom, no sky July. Now we're in August, and what you're seeing on here is the progression of the marine layer tomorrow morning having filled in almost entirely through much of the bay. The I, one place I could stand here or I wouldn't be in the clouds is up on Skyline Boulevard. This is pretty much where our camera on Black Mountain sits, which typically looks out across the Santa Clara Valley. And that's where we're kind of looking from that vantage point. But if I remove the uh, clouds for a moment, you see where I am. Everybody's got this. The one place that didn't was the Tri-Valley. You were relatively clear in that view. So if we look at the daytime highs tomorrow, you do see the differences. This is why I'm saying this is a classic pattern. You are going to have to warm up into the low 90s in the Tri-Valley tomorrow. But come over the hill in Fremont with influence from the bay, and access to the marine layer is only going to 79. San Jose, you're going to 84 tomorrow. That's pretty much on the mark for average. Like 83 would be the average daytime high for this time of year. But the 91 in Livermore and the 92 in Concord, those come in about four degrees above average. It's not major, this is not a heat wave, but it's a little, just a little warmer inland. San Francisco, you're doing exactly what you should this time of year. You should be in the mid to upper 60s for daytime highs. And if we look at the North Bay numbers, your temperatures will top out very, very much in line with where you were today because you woke up with gray skies in the North Bay, as did everybody today. And you're pretty much doing that again tomorrow. All right, let's go to the forecast imagery. Kind of helps to get the big picture idea for what's going on right now. And when we use the high resolution satellite for California as a whole, there are a couple of things to see on here. There's one that you don't see, which is very good. You don't see any big plumes of smoke coming off of wildfires today. Not to say that there's not smoke coming off of the park fire. Do you see it right there? Very subtle. That is smoke right there. But it's a lot more subdued than it had been, say, about a week ago. That, by the way, that's thunderstorms that have developed over the Sierra. And when we switch from looking at high-resolution satellite to going to the radar depiction within those clouds, there's a lot of lightning over there. But what's different about this is there's way less than there was just two days ago. Most of the thunderstorms have gotten pushed off to the east. So from that standpoint, we've also quieted down. And then at home, if you look at this view, this is a live picture right now from Salesforce Tower, you can actually see the silhouette of East Peak from Mount Tam up there, up in Marin. So this tells us the marine layer is fairly low, but it is streaming fairly far inland. And if we watch a time lapse, look how quickly this is coming in. So there's a lot of momentum here. This is going to be able to fill in pretty much the entire bay tomorrow, which is why we wake up. And it's pretty much filled in for just about everybody. So let's see how long this pattern is going to last. We'll say goodbye to the virtual map, and I'll bring in the seven-day forecast for our inland microclimate first. There's one day on here that doesn't behave, and that would be Tuesday. So tomorrow, we've already seen that. You're going to be low 90s. But for Tuesday, there is a bit of a spike in temperatures. You're going to be on the verge of 100 if you're in the Inland Valley. But it's not going to last long. Look back here. Start cooling back down. And there's an 88-degree day for next weekend. And that is a significant number for inland microclimates for early August because 88 is the average daytime high. That's going to be kind of nice. We have not had very many days at average, let alone below average. It's been a while since we've been below average. But just to have a victory of getting back down to average for at least one day and not having to climb too far above it, even for the rest of the seven day, is a good news forecast. All right, Brian, back to you.